Prisoner's Dilemma, hopefully this is recorded somewhere. So basically, if you and I do a crime and we're both uh, arrested, okay. and they've got you in one jail cell and they got one me in the other jail cell, it's it's a it's a matrix of outcomes. So situation one is you in you in, you admit to everything, and I stay silent. I get a harsher punishment, mm-hmm. but you still get punished. Or I admit and you stay silent. I get punished, mm-hmm. but you get a harsher punishment. If we both admit, we both get harshly punished. If neither, if we both keep silent, there's no punishment. So what's the proper outcome there? Don't talk to the police. Now I I've so, I told this to Bra- I told this to Braxton. I that's an this, economics thing. And I told this to baby mom number two. So I, I told him I was like, you know, we were we were driving back from San Francisco and whenever um, I can't remember what happened. Somebody did cut us off or something, almost caused a wreck or whatever it was. And I was like, yeah, you know. And we're talking about if we'd have been involved, I'd have been like, well, you know, nobody knows who was driving, you know. It's like, so if somebody gets hurt in a, in a car accident and we're both in the car, they know they can see on the video the truck, but they don't know who was driving. You know what I mean? Do you think, uh, you know, we were talking about cell phones. Do you think Internet, cell phones, everything, not only has increased the number of Karens, but has increased the number of uh, litigation? Definitely. Definitely, yeah, and now everybody's got they. You're if you're smart to put a uh, camera in your vehicle that records while you're driving. I mean, imagine all the insurance claims that used to get people just whip over in front of you and slam on the brakes, cause you to wreck. You know, and you're like, oh, it's like it's your fault, and they get out holding their neck and their back. But anyways, prisoners dilemma is a real is a real deal. We got um, we confessed to it. So they come and fake arrest us. Um, they take us in. To, you've never been to jail, no? I assume no. Yes. Okay. Well, if, for those of you that have never been to jail, 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 or prison, both. It, it happens the same way. I'm only. A, I've been to a min- municipality jail situations. Yeah, but but when you go to jail, the very first thing they do is make sure you don't have anything on you that can harm mm-hmm. yourself or others. Mm-hmm. This takes place by you taking your clothes off and doing a series of exercises. If you're female, squat and cough is one of them. The greatest story I've ever heard about a squat and cough incident is a woman squat and coughed and guess what guess, guess what came I did not know this. I did not know the squat and cough deal. What came out? Oh no, I don't I can't say it. What came out? You'll have to edit it out. Come. So they were like, <laughs> were they turned on by the whole situation, or well, was it from earlier? It was from earlier. I mean, oh, I, so it wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I'm it was a guess, dudes. Yeah. It, was, it was it was male DNA, splat on the ground, Ugh. and then that. Yeah, you regret that one. But anyways, so so when you're a guy, you got to I mean, you got to like that's going to go viral. We'll just yeah. bleep. <laughs> <laughs> so so when you're a guy, you got to like bend over, spread your butt cheeks, and do all this kind of stuff. Which which we didn't have to do that because we were fake arrested. Right. So they made sure they pat us down and all that, but they we didn't you didn't have to fucking grab your toes and spread your butt cheeks and do all the stuff that you got to do when you normally go into jail. Depending on how I, th- I think that's they get only for it. like again, I'm not a prison expert or a lawyer or a cop, but I think that's only for like like extended stays. Yes, for like one, like a one or two night thing. Well, like if a you if, thing, if you just, just get like taken a, into a holding cell yeah. for for being drunk, chances are you're not ever going to get issued clothes. Right, right. If they issue your clothes, you're going to go through this. Right. And there's that super trooper scene where they throw fucking um, powdered sugar on him. <laughs> like, I say it for the delicing. De- de- yeah, the yeah. delicing. They do that. Like they not powdered sugar, but they delice you. Right. So it, I mean, it's a whole thing. Like, it's a whole thing. You go through the whole process. So they take us through there, and they explain all that to us. And then we're getting to the back, you know, so so fake arrested for stealing a bus. Now they're trying to scare us. Now they probably told the inmates, a portion of the inmates, that, hey, we're coming. We're going to walk them through general population, whatever, talk shit to them. Because they were talking shit. And they, now, they might talk sh- I've been in jail. I've never been like, let me go to the front of this thing and talk shit to the people that are walking by. It's never – like, I'm just sitting there – 
hoping and praying that these days pass. You know what I mean? The longest stint I ever did was I got went in on a Friday. I got out on a Monday morning, so it was a weekend, but it felt like forever. I didn't shit the whole time. It was terrible. So I was scared of the metal toilet. I was actually in the in the deal. Y'all ain't gonna be able to put this on there either. But I was in my cell. I got it whenever I did this weekend in jail. I went in and. The very first cell that I saw, so they've got they've got like a common area, and um, you know it's got the it's got a couple of bathrooms, um, showers in that common area, which are all tucked away, like they're not out in the open, like you're not standing in the middle of the deal shower. But got private showers, deal picnic tables, uh, metal picnic tables where you can eat, and a TV in the common area. And then they got like ten individual cells that have bunk beds in them, and each have their own toilet slash sink in them so bunk bed bunk bed bunk bed 10 of them five on this wall five on the other wall with the common area in the middle and you do your time in the common area essentially you stay in the common area unless they have a lockdown then you go into your little cell and they shut the gate and then you're just in there with your other person when they have overcrowding in the county jail like it was whenever i did my weekend they in the common area you get boats what are called boats it's just a like think of it like a plastic canoe or a plastic kayak looking thing that you sleep on you put it on the ground you sleep on it and then during the day you stack them up in a corner and that's it like so you get you you know you get issued a blanket um i think a toothbrush some fucking shower sandals um and whatever you're wearing and you get to keep your underwear and that's it you're, you're in there and you get a boat or you get a bunk that has a mattress pad and you get your own mattress pad you get your own roll um, that goes on the boat if you unfortunate enough to have to sleep on the ground at a jail on a boat. So when we walked in, um, there's a group of us, like four or five, and I seen that top bunk when I walked in. And then I turned the corner to go into the common area, and I noticed that everybody else was on boats, and I was like, fuck this, I'm going back to the top bunk. So I go to the top bunk. It's 2 in the morning at this point in time. I crawl the top bunk. I'm in there. Um, and the very first thing I, <laughs> very first thing I saw the next morning, I wake up. I'm on the top bunk, you know what I mean? And you know, you're in jail. You don't, you know, you don't know nobody yet. You ain't talked to nobody. You don't know what's going on. So I wake up and you kind of hear the commotion. Everybody else is awake. They've been awake for a while. And I lean over the side to look over the side at the toilet. And there's a, uh, a transvestite, a transhuman, nice tits, taking a shit. And I'm like, all right. This is my cellmate. Now I know why that top bunk was uh, was available. You know what I mean? But I was just like, I was just in shock because they're, they're like, why was it available? Why? Yeah. Because there was a trans lady staying in there. But what does that have to do with the top bunk? Well, nobody. Everybody else would rather sleep on a boat than room in the. In oh, the they want to be as far away as possible from the trans Got lady. It. Got it. Guy, whatever. I don't know. Like. Male jail, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. tattooed on makeup, definitely tattooed on makeup. No makeup lasts that long. Nice tits, so you know what I mean? Like, I what can I say? She, she, yeah, I'd have hit on her at a bar, but now I'm in jail. I know you got a penis, so that's that's the best I can do. But, but that was my 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 very you know longest weekend in jail. But in this particular instance, when I stole the bus. I'm walking through the county jail, and they're there to scare, so they're talking shit to us. And then a guy I know, my dad's friend, you know what I mean, spots me. He's like, hey, Corey, what's up? He comes up. He's like, bro, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to jail. He's like, oh, no, you're not going to jail. You wouldn't be back here in your street clothes if you were going to jail. You'd be going to jail. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, thanks, dad's friend, uh, for doing it. I'm like, I never expected to run into somebody I know at jail. You know what I mean? But my dad's friend, he's like, nah, bro, they're just, they brought, they told us you were coming. They brought you through here. You're like, blah, 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 blah. I was like, all right, cool, man. When you get out, I got another six months. See you then, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> like, 